You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to spice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's a big, it works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, weekly art history for all ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're looking at Maria and Julian Martinez. In prepping for this episode, I was watching a documentary with Maria Martinez's great-granddaughter, who said that she remembers the sound of her great-grandmother pounding the clay. She says clay was in her veins, and she would sing as she worked the clay. She said that singing was a way of praying, and I think it's worth remembering that this pottery is not simply a vessel to hold physical material. It holds personal, cultural, historical, and spiritual significance. Maria Martinez would use the raw materials found on her Pueblo, mixing clay with volcanic ash. After mixing the clay and ash to just the right consistency, she began rolling coils to hand build her pottery. The coils of clay would be stacked layer upon layer to build up her pot to the desired form as she scraped and smoothed the walls with a gourd tool. After allowing the clay to dry and harden, she then burnished the piece, rubbing a small stone across the surface to polish it. Now, if you're wondering how rubbing a stone across a surface would polish the clay, basically, the way burnishing works is it gets all the clay particles oriented the same way. And since they reflect the light the same direction, the surface becomes glossy. It tends to work better on pieces that are fired at a lower temperature for some reason. If you want to learn more about clay, how it's harvested, how it's created, I did an Art Smart episode where I actually talked to somebody from Amico Clay all about that. I'll link that in the show notes for those who are curious about clay and how that works. Now, Maria Martinez belonged to the Tewa-speaking Pueblo people, known for their rich artistic heritage. Pottery making was deeply rooted in Puebloan culture, serving as a means of artistic expression and a reflection of their close connection with the natural world. Maria grew up watching her family members create pottery, learning the traditional techniques. Of course, we seldom talk about those who simply carry on a tradition. Maria Martinez and her husband Julian revolutionized pottery production and shared their methods with their community, which not only helped increase the popularity of pottery as an art form, which had been waning in the late 19th and early 20th century, their work helped boost the local economy. Their method involved painting matte black clay over the polished black surface. The black on black pottery became extremely popular and therefore valuable in the early 20th century, and artists in the Santa Clara Pueblo continue producing pots in this style today. Making ceramics in the Pueblo was considered a communal activity. Different steps in the process were often shared. The potters helped each other with the arduous tasks like mixing the paints and burnishing the clay. In that same documentary, the interview I referenced earlier, Martinez's great-granddaughter said she actually hated it when Maria would come to her and say, it's time to burnish the clay because it's it's time-consuming, it's labor-intensive, and she just wanted to go play with all of her friends. Of course, as we get older, we tend to look at those things a little bit differently, and she now sees sort of the significance and the importance of that time spent doing these things together. It's sort of a bonding activity. Maria Martinez would form these perfectly symmetrical vessels by hand without a wheel, and then others, often her husband Julian, would decorate the piece. Like I said, it was often a family affair, but as she began showing her work in galleries, she was encouraged to sign her name on the artworks. Like it or not, what we see is only a part of what we appreciate about the visual arts. This podcast and others like it are based on the idea that stories are a big part of the work as story creates human connection. Ironically, in some ways, that connection is diminished when the work is attributed to a group of people rather than an individual. Her pieces became more valuable when she signed her name to them, but she was conflicted because doing so on some level denied the communal nature of the production. 
I found a great quote, though, that I think really summarizes her view of this whole thing. She said, quote, I just thank God because my work is not only for me, it's for all the people. I said to my God, the great spirit, Mother Earth gave me this luck. I'm not going to keep it. End quote. She viewed her commercial artistic success as a tremendous gift to herself, but she wanted to use that to the benefit of her community. And from what I've read, she was also known to sign her name on pots created by other Puebloan potters. And while on some level that feels like plagiarism in a lot of our culture today, it appears to have been more an act of generosity intended to make their work more valuable and help them economically. Also, in the context of a more communal culture, the signature and the claim of authorship was probably a bit less important. Now, while she was known to be rather humble in discussing her work and her achievements, make no mistake, Maria Martinez was an immensely important artist. Through her work, she not only preserved her ancestral traditions, but she revitalized and redefined them leaving an indelible mark on the world of ceramics. Martinez's black on black ceramic vessel from like 1939. It's one of the artworks considered required learning for American AP art history courses. This piece now considered a masterpiece showcases her mastery of form design and firing techniques. The vessel's elegant shape, its perfectly proportioned curves, smooth surface, all of that demonstrates Maria's impeccable craftsmanship. As I said, she did all of this hand building without a wheel. But it's the black on black designs that elevate it. Aside from the fact that black goes with everything and the monochromatic color scheme gives it a simple elegance and sophistication that's timeless, The design feels somewhat universal in the sense that everyone has an entry point to appreciate the work. But when you start to dig into the piece, you'll find it's a deeper reflection of a pride in her cultural heritage. In the 1910s, Maria and Julian Martinez worked at an archaeological dig site led by Edgar Lee Hewitt. Hewitt was the director of the School of American Archaeology in Santa Fe, which funded the expedition on the Pajarito Pueblo in New Mexico. It was a prehistoric ancestral Pueblo site, which would later become Bandelier National Monument. Julian helped the archaeologists dig while Maria helped around the campsite. As they excavated the ancestral Pueblo site from the 12th to 17th centuries, Julian made drawings and paintings of the designs he saw on walls and pottery shards. These designs would become the basis for the designs painted onto their pottery. Hewitt recognized their talent, and he encouraged them. During that time, he supplied materials like paints, and then he began purchasing their works for his own collection and for the Museum of New Mexico, Santa Fe, which he founded in 1909. In the arts, a lot of times there is that complaint that, you know, people find success solely through networking. And while it certainly helps to have a museum founder as a patron, the Martinez's were definitely putting in the work. They experimented with different techniques and discovered that they could blacken their pottery in the firing process by smothering the fire with powdered cow and horse manure. I really wish I could find the notes on exactly how that discovery was made. I mean, I've never stood around watching a fire and thought, I wonder what would happen if I tossed some poop on there. But I guess it's that lack of vision that's held me back while others have become great. Regardless of what inspired them to conduct experiments with excrement, it proved successful in some ways. It removed the oxygen but retained the heat and resulted in blackened pottery. Smothering the fire trapped the smoke which became embedded within the clay. While Maria had burnished the piece to a high polish, the designs Julian painted using slip, a mixture of clay and water, would produce a matte finish. The downside was that these pots would not be as hard and not entirely watertight. The upside was that people pay a lot more for pottery that looks nice than they do for pottery that's functional. 
As decorative pots, they were perfectly suited to the modern aesthetic with abstract patterns that seemed to fit in with the art deco aesthetic popular at the time. The Martinez's designs had some superficial similarities to the art deco style. The patterning and elegance of black on black, for example, but Deco was a bit more mechanical, embracing the industrial age, while Maria and Julian took their inspiration from tradition and designs based on natural phenomena like rain clouds, flowing rivers, and bird feathers. The ancient Puebloan people had no written language, so a lot of it is understood by looking at symbols, decorations on pottery shards, and tracking changes in those lines and shapes over time. Martinez's commitment to passing on her knowledge and skill to younger generations ensured the preservation and continuation of the Puebloan pottery tradition. Her work continued the tradition, but more importantly, it brought it out into a new context, helping Puebloan and non-Puebloan people understand and appreciate the art and the culture it represents. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.